How much money do you need to live in Jamaica? This is a question many people fail to answer because they go like, well, it depends on your lifestyle, whether you have a family or not, where exactly you live, and so on. Sure, it depends on many factors, but this video will give you the exact numbers that will match the needs of every viewer. Is it even possible? Let's see. Straight to the point. As a foreigner, for a family of two adults, you will need about 1,000 US dollars per month to survive. And by survive, I mean like the very basics. You'll be struggling with pretty much everything. You won't die of starvation, you will have some sort of shelter and a bit of amenities, but that's about it. For a Jamaican, however, this survival amount of money would be around 316 US dollars per two adults. Obviously, it's not because Jamaicans need less than foreigners. It's because of very different reasons that you will see in a minute. But of course, if you don't want to struggle with everything, and this will double your money spent per month. Now, if you want to have a comfortable life, a really nice house with a swimming pool, uh, maybe with a garden. Well, for that kind of lifestyle, you will need 9,000 US dollars per month in Jamaica. It's not like luxury in your you know, spending money on everything. No, no, no. It's just comfortable life with a nice car, nice house, you know, that kind of stuff. How did I come up with these numbers? Obviously, I'm going to show you. <laughs> I didn't take these numbers out of the blue. These are the five categories of people that we're going to look at so that you can understand how much money each category of people spend and what they spend it on. This is going to give you an idea of the cost of living in Jamaica and what you can expect as a foreigner. For the purpose of this video, we're only going to look at the rental prices in Jamaica right now. We're not going to look at buying property in Jamaica because this will be covered in a separate video about property in Jamaica. So the website that you can use to compare prices is definitely Coldwell Bankers because it gives like a nice range of different properties. You're looking at around 400 US dollars per month for like the basic one bedroom apartment in Montego Bay. Now for the very exact amount, you can get a house up in the hills, about half an hour drive from Montego Bay downtown. Whereas in Kingston, for this amount, you're probably gonna get just a studio. Okay, what happens if you're a Jamaican person who is struggling to survive, like really, really struggling? How much do you pay for rent? Well, you don't. Nobody's gonna pay rent when they have no money. They, they would just live somewhere where they can live, either with relatives or on a piece of land, they would just find an abandoned house and so on. But they're not gonna make a contract with somebody and pay rent. You, on the other hand, as a foreigner, will have to do that because there is no way you can get a visa or anything when you don't have like a property that you rent. So a nice apartment that is furnished somewhere in New Kingston area, maybe one bedroom or two bedroom apartment, will cost you around 800 US dollars per month. Now it can also be a studio, like in Freeport in Montego Bay, a studio can cost you just as much. It's like 800 US dollars per month or more. Now if you want a comfortable, like comfortable, nice home with a swimming pool, you know, like maybe three bedroom, four bedroom house, uh, you're looking at about two and a half thousand US dollars per month. The first thing you're going to need is obviously electricity. There is only one company in Jamaica that provides electricity, it's called JPS. JPS stands for Jamaica Public Service Company Limited. The price for electricity in Jamaica is one of the highest in the world. And I'm not joking, guys, it's really high. The rate for electricity in Jamaica is closely tied to the price of imported diesel fuel. If fuel costs more, then the price for electricity goes up. And because it is imported, it is also closely tied to the exchange rate of US dollar and Jamaican dollar. If you want to understand the way the price for electricity is calculated in Jamaica, you kind of need something like um, a degree in maths. If you have a logical question, why doesn't Jamaica use solar power? It does, 
but it doesn't affect the price. It's a long story. If you use electricity just, you know, for some light and uh, maybe a fridge, and uh, that's about it, uh, you're looking at around 25 US dollars per month. Now, if you're an immigrant and you're renting an apartment, um, and you also have maybe a couple of computers you have to use, and maybe a fan that you're using, right? So you're looking at around $40 per month. If you want to use AC at night only, you know, when you just sleep at night, and uh, you maybe have a kettle and a microwave that you use from time to time, 120 US dollars per month. Now, if you live in a house, your electricity bill is gonna shoot through the roof right away because there are so many things that a house consumes, like the outside lights at night, like if you have an electric gate that keeps you know, opening. When we rented a house, our electricity bill was somewhere between 280 US dollars per month and higher, and that's without using AC. That was only with fans, like we used four fans in a, in a, in a house. So if you're looking at about a four bedroom house uh, that has uh, a pool that uses up a pump, uh, some people would have electric stove in Jamaica, which is, I think is crazy with these prices for electricity. Uh, you're looking at around 1,200 US dollars per month. So if you're staying in an Airbnb in Jamaica, if you are not inside, make sure you turn off your AC because... Water. There is a company called NWC. It's a National Water Commission. For the, like, the very basics, shower, washing dishes, you're looking at around $20 per month. If you're renting a nice apartment and you can afford the luxury of taking shower a couple of times a day, you know, and uh, then uh, you're looking at water bill around 50 US dollars per month. But of course, if you're looking at a house and garden, and if the garden is not too big, it's going to be like, you know, a little bit. But if the garden is big, it's going to obviously cost you more because you'll need more water. If you have a swimming pool, you will need more water for the swimming pool because on hot days, the water evaporates. So you have to top up the pool all the time, in which case your water bill is going to be about 140 US dollars per month. While for a house without a swimming pool, it will be around 100 US dollars per month. Assuming both have a garden, Jamaica doesn't have hot water. All right, so there is no central hot water system. So the only way you can get hot water is either with solar heater or electric heater. For example, the house we rent out on the Airbnb has a solar heater. Electric heater would kill your bill. That's it. Like if you use an electric heater, uh, add another like about 500 US dollars per month if you want hot water every day. So how do we manage uh, with this, uh, you know, uh, we use cold water? You know, in Ukraine, we often have a situation when there is no hot water, yet um, <clears throat> we're still getting bills for hot water. And, uh, and it's minus 20 outside, so it's not like in Jamaica, you go like, nice and warm, and you go cold shower, that's good. In Ukraine, you go like freezing cold, you come home and it's freezing cold water in the tap. What you do in this case, you take a pot, like big pot, put it on a gas stove, lighten it up, boiled hot, add some cold water in it, mix it, and then you just shower. <laughs> it's awesome. Okay, the speed of internet in Jamaica. You can get up to 100 Mbps download and up to five Mbps upload. Jamaica has quite good internet speed. The problem is how much it costs. For this kind of speeds I mentioned, it's gonna cost you 120 US dollars per month. You can get around uh, 40 US dollars per month. It's for a package of 25 Mbps and that's pretty much enough if you want to play computer games, uh, do upload YouTube videos, right? So if you want just bare minimum, like a little internet so that you can, I don't know, talk uh, over Skype with your family, just watch YouTube maybe, then you're looking at a package about 10 megabits and a plus cable TV if you want, and that's about $25 per month. For Calypso Villa that we rent out on Airbnb, we have two accounts and three points of uh, internet access just to make sure the full coverage of the house. So that costs us about 180 US dollars per month. Okay, there are two companies that provide internet in Jamaica. One company is called um, Cable and Wireless. This is a monopolist that owns pretty much all internet across the Caribbean and most cable service across the Caribbean. 
Cable and Wireless was originally set up in Britain. You can track it back to the 19th century. And in Jamaica, it operates under the brand Floor. Is there an alternative to Floor? Uh, yes, uh, there is Digicel. Digicel has really fast internet now in Kingston, but not anywhere else. You see, Digicel is initially a mobile network. If Digicel goes all over Jamaica with uh, their internet, that would be fantastic because these two are going to compete. And as a result, um, the general user would have the benefits of this competition because when there is competition, the prices drop. Uh, when there is no competition, like in case of Floor, the prices for the internet kept really high. Now, of course, with phone, you can get a prepaid service or you can get a postpaid service. For most people who do important conversations over the phone, they go for postpaid service. I'm using this service. I'm paying 45 US dollars per month because I use a lot of Wi-Fi at home. I'm not using up uh, the data that I'm given. Like I have, and it rolls on to next month. But of course, if you want to save up, and you don't want to use data much, you would go with prepaid service. In the survival mode, you don't want to have a smartphone, you have your simple phone, in which case other people can call you, but you yourself not gonna make any calls. And in this case, they're spending only around four US dollars per month on their phone. Cooking gas. In Jamaica, we have gas supply in tanks. So we don't have central gas supply system. The gas tank we have lasts us two months usually. And we do cooking two times a day for a family of four. So on average, however, you're looking at around six US dollars per month if you're like really, really saving up on uh, cooking. So you don't cook things that take a long time to cook. So you don't waste too much gas. But it would be more, for instance, if you like want a comfortable life and you want like proper cooking being done and you know then in this case you would have much higher bills for gas things that you're going to see now are mostly relevant for houses or people who have nicer, bigger amenities. If you live in a house and you have a garden, you will need a garden now or you have to do your garden yourself. 95 US dollars per month. That's how much a gardener is going to cost you. Like it depends on the size of your garden. Some gardeners take as little as, I don't know, $20 per visit, but then they might not have the equipment. So you have to provide them with equipment. If you want a gardener with his own equipment or her, in this case, that's about six and a half thousand Jamaican dollars per visit. And you need at least two visits like that per month. Otherwise your garden gets overgrown. And um, so that adds up to your monthly costs. So of course for a big house, it's going to be way more. You are probably looking at full time gardener who's going to come and trim plants in every morning and in this case 350 US dollars per month. If you have a pool it attracts extra costs. These costs consist of poolmen, so basically the work of a person who's going to clean the pool on a regular basis and the chemicals that go into the pool to keep the water clean. I'm going to give you prices for a small pool like this. A visit of a poolman for such kind of pool would be around three and a half thousand Jamaican dollars. So you need him at least once a week and plus you need the chemicals. So in total it will come to around, um, what is it, 27,000, yeah like 200 US dollars per month. Obviously, if your pool is bigger, the work of the poolman is going to cost you more and um, you will need more chemicals to put in. And by chemicals, I mean chlorine and acid. So you mix chlorine with acid when you put in a pool. Uh, can you do it yourself? Yes, you can actually. You, you can clean your pool by yourself, um, sure, but this will only save uh, money on poolmen. It will take you about five hours to clean a small pool like that. Uh, a professional pool and will do it within like two hours. These, these are not prices for luxury stuff. These are prices for like a uh, basic comfortable home with a nice pool, a small pool. People who have a private house would tend to have some security set in place. So in Jamaica, we have this several companies for that. It's King Alarm, it's Guardsman, Marksman. There are all sorts of services. I'm going to leave the links in the description for them. Well, if you just want a service that would have um, CCTV cameras and someone watching the area nearby, and then you should be able to get them on call, that kind of thing. 
uh, you're looking at around 50 US dollars per month. Initial installation fee, I'm not taking into account. I'm only talking about utility bills that you're gonna get once a month. For a bigger house, like for instance, right? Security system in place with alarm, with all sorts of things, right? Uh, you're looking at around 200 US dollars per month for a big, big house. You know what, you'd be surprised, uh, but quite a lot of people go with a helper. It would actually be either a person who looks after their children or uh, a person who comes and does, you know, comes and goes, like does housekeeping. In Jamaica, it's very common to have a house and then help a quarter. And some people might be listening to me like, what are you talking about? We thought all Jamaicans live in huts. <laughs> I'm going to make a video on property in Jamaica and how Jamaicans really live. And uh, obviously there are poor people, there are rich people, there are middle class people, uh, like when it comes to income. But the percentage of people who live in certain areas, that is going to be covered in the property video, like who lives where. For the purpose of this video, just to give you an idea how much it costs to have a helper in Jamaica, salary of a helper uh, is somewhere around 40,000, between 40,000 to 60,000 Jamaican dollars per month. 40,000 is like the minimum uh, that helper gets when he or she lives on the property. You might look at it and think, wow, it's only 40,000 a helper gets. That's like nothing. The helper is actually getting 91,000. It's just that 40,000 comes net while the rest is covered by a family who hired that helper. It's still not much, but I'm just saying, like people forget about that. I have a video on uh, shopping in the supermarket and shopping on a marketplace to give you an idea of the prices of how much things are. Now, if you want to survive, like really, really survive and get the very basics, so what you do, you buy rice and you eat rice with rice. Yeah, that's what we did uh, on certain days because of COVID or on certain days when we just arrived in Jamaica to save up money. Um, yeah, that's not particularly healthy. Well, maybe you're going to add um, a little bit of turkey neck or, you know, a little bit of meat. That's what Jamaicans would do. And in this case, food for them would cost about 150 US dollars per month for two people. The reason why Jamaicans can do that, I will explain in a minute. Now, you as a foreigner will not be able to do that. And uh, the simple reason is, of course, you, you don't have the access to resources that Jamaicans do. Like you don't have relatives who have a garden where you can dig some yums, you know, and use yums to cook. You have to buy everything. So as a result, your food prices, you're looking at around 25,000 per person. So this calculation is done based on 900 Jamaican dollars per food per day. That's like 300 per each meal. You can get ready-made food at this price in Jamaica. So you're gonna get like two parties and that will allow you to survive. But I also have like home expenses. That would be maintenance that you have to do. Things shouldn't break, but they do break. Sometimes your landlord can fix that, but sometimes you're fixing certain things, like there is a tap leaking or roof leaking or something's happening. You would have to invest into fixing that. Even if you don't do any maintenance on your rented home, there is still something you need to buy, like your fan breaks down, or maybe you need a new lamp or something like that, or a glass. I call this my Bashko money. It's like because of the shop that is called Bashko. That's, uh, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right, by the way, but this is how it's spelled. And they have like good quality items as well as really cheap basic items. So that's why I like this shop. Because I'm not sure if people who have like really nice income shop at Bashko. Maybe they do. I don't know. So at the end of the day, uh, it would cost about a thousand US dollars per year um, that goes into maintenance and replacing of items that break down. So on average, that would make $80 a month or higher. Those people who have large hearts, they would most likely have pets too, like dogs. And then of course you need to buy dog food and dog food is super expensive in Jamaica. Like you're looking at around a hundred US dollars for a big bag like that. Now, of course, people who are on low income also have pets sometimes, like they would have a dog or two or three, you know, but they won't buy dog food usually. They would uh, just boil rice and give some leftovers, that kind of stuff. 
And another thing is insurance, like health insurance and property insurance. And we're only going to include health insurance. 7,365 Jamaican dollars per month. And it's a family package from Sajakor. But it, of course, it depends on whether you already have a bank account with Sajakor. But this is just a rough estimate so that you can understand how much insurance costs in Jamaica. A lot of people don't buy insurance in Jamaica, right? So they don't have health insurance. As simple as that. I will have a separate video on the situation with hospitals and medical care system in Jamaica. And that's where I I'm going to talk about prices for that to give you an idea. Most likely, if you're saving up money and you're on low income, you're not going to be using a car. You would be using public transport. It's going to cost you $150 per person one way and $150 back. If you work 20 days, that means you're spending $6,000 Jamaican dollars on public transport just to go to work and back. This is the bare minimum. Here is I have a calculation for my car. How much cars cost? 3,000 US dollars for a car that's fallen apart about 20 years old. 50,000 US dollars for a pickup truck that looks really nice and you want to drive it. But we're now talking about monthly expenses. So we're going to assume that a person who lives in an apartment got a cheap car, like really cheap car, like I have. That pickup truck cost me four and a half thousand um, US dollars. Um, <laughs> And it's, it, it's my baby. So, of course, if you get a cheap car, it's going to break down on you all the time. Uh, my truck would cost me somewhere around 1,400 US dollars per year to repair. Smarter people buy new cars and they get a loan to get new cars. So the new car is not going to break down on you for the first five years or something. So, but you're looking at um, monthly loan payments for the car, which would come to around 250 US dollars per month. If you got a nicer car like this, uh, you know, the 50,000 Toyota Tacoma or Toyota Hilux pickup truck. So obviously if I had the money, I would have had a pickup truck, as you might have guessed. So um, I do have a pickup truck. It's just it doesn't work. Now, of course, for two people, if you want a comfortable life, that means each one of you going to have a car and you would probably have to pay a loan for both people. So that's going to come to this money. And of course, car means fuel. Assuming that your work is about 20 kilometers away. So to go there and back, it would be 40 kilometers you, you're going to be driving. You're going to use up about 57 liters with a smaller car, 96 liters with a bigger car, which results in this amount. And now you have to double the amount because you have two cars for the last guys. So that's how much you're going to spend on fuel on average. You also need to license your car. You need to do fitness tests and you need to do registration every year and you have to uh, pay for that. And of course you need car insurance. That's another one and that comes on the top and you have 27,000. But that's, remember it's per year so we divide it by 12 to get the monthly um, amount of money we're going to spend on average. Here comes the list of total expenses. And for your convenience, I made it in four different currencies. US dollars, Jamaican dollars, British pounds and Canadian dollars. Feel free to pause the video at the page you need. To have a full understanding of the standard of living in Jamaica and whether living in Jamaica is easy or difficult, you need to know how much people actually get paid. But this is a story for a different video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this video has been useful. If you'd like to see more videos about Jamaica, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any content. My name is Irina and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.